The flag code, as it reads, um, is really only lowered for uh, instances where there are the passing of um, officials that have given significant distinguished service to our country, whether uh, presidents, uh, uh, Antonin Scalia, uh, Nancy Reagan, certainly Memorial Day. Um, we do on 9-11 for first responders um, in remembrance of that, as well as uh, Pearl Harbor Day. And so when I first saw it and interpreted the, interpret the code, it's primarily for uh, those things instead of the, a tragedy where innocent Americans are getting killed. So the President of the United States has, has requested all flags across the country be lowered, and in fact, probably every single one is, except for the ones that are in your county. Uh, 49 innocent Americans have been massacred. Um, you're not lowering your flag. You didn't lower the flag, I know, uh, for Sandy Hook. You didn't lower it for the Boston bombings. You didn't lower it uh, for San Bernardino. Why not? Uh, well, the, the, the same, for the same reason. Uh, certainly when the president makes his proclamation to lower the flags, he's making the proclamation for all flags at U.S. installations, federal properties, uh, Navy warships, embassies across the uh, overseas. Um, and really my perspective is, is, is different. I mean, he's not asking every, every American to, I guess. The proclamation is an order every American to. Uh, every flag at the CVS down the street doesn't come down. Uh, necessarily, uh, some churches, you know, either aren't plugged in or paying attention, or the flag doesn't come down. Right. Um, but 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 I guess the question so, is, when so you is say it, you're lowering it, sorry, Commissioner, on Memorial Day, for example, right, to honor soldiers who lost their lives fighting for America. Correct. These are innocent civilians who have lost their lives in the war on terror. Uh, they have been slaughtered by 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 a terrorist. Uh, that's what this was. Uh, that is what uh, San Bernardino was. Uh, does that argument not stand for you at all to honor them in that way? It, and I. And I do completely agree with that. I mean, it, it's a terrorist event, um, and I guess my perspective has been diff it has was different. And certainly, my as my original post is probably a couple of years old. I, I put it up every with the last three events uh, in this term as my chairmanship, and certainly have gotten a lot of uh, feedback from folks sharing perspective and uh, that I've you know didn't previously have about it. Um, but I look at the terrorist events, um, and I think about our flag and about how it identifies and characterizes the mood of the country. Um, and quite, my, I guess when I think about, for instance, 9-11 and the iconic picture of the three firemen raising the flag in the rubble the next day after the event is really how I feel about it. I'm, I'm, I'm certainly heartbroken by the tragedy of all these tragedies. So you uh, feel fly the flag high in the face of terror as uh, to fight back as opposed to lower it, right? That, am that's, I, am that's I my heart on, sort of getting it? That's exactly my heart on the issue. I, I'm certainly brokenhearted as soon as I woke up uh, Sunday morning to read the news of what, it, what was happening as it was developing. I mean, I'm brokenhearted, my family's broken up about it, but I'm also mad. I mean, I'm tired of, uh, of us being attacked by extremists of certainly different kinds um, when we're just trying, when innocent people are trying to live their life in this country. And uh, I would like for us to stand up as Americans um, and be proud of being Americans, but also I'm ready to, I'm, I'm, I want to be proud Americans. I want us to, All right. I want us to stand tall. Uh, Mr. Yoho, thank you for joining us. I wanted to start asking you sure. for your reaction on what happened here on Sunday, what happened in your state, and what we've seen during the last two days. Well, you know, obviously it was a horrific um, accident or tragedy that happened that was carried out by a, a, a perverted person that had mental illness. And for this to happen, we're seeing too much of this not just in our country but around the world and we as people as humanity have to come and bring an end to this this is not acceptable in anybody's country in anybody's religion and it serves nobody any good and it just causes all this strife all this uh, grief and it has to end how can it end what can be done to prevent situations like what we we've seen here in orlando from happening again well i think the biggest thing is you have to have community leaders, uh, county leaders, state leaders, national leaders that say this is not the way for humanity to live, for us to live together as a society. We can't do this. So we have to have leadership from, the, from our leaders in uh, government. The other thing we need to do is take advantage of the tools that we do have. Our FBI had um, put this person on a watch list twice. They investigated them. Then we saw his association with the bomber that came from Florida to Syria, the suicide bomber. And then um, 
um, you know, the, the reports that he had uh, where he was going to buy guns, had they had him uh, flagged after he went to Saudi Arabia as somebody to watch, this person never would have bought, been able to buy arms in this country. Do you think that there has to be a change in uh, laws about the ability of Americans to purchase guns? In this case, Omar Mateen didn't have a criminal past. He went through background checks. He passed the FBI um, a background check for purchasing these weapons. Do laws have to change? I think we need to do a better job at enforcing the laws. And again, you know, if you look at the, the FBI flagged him twice and then he went to Saudi Arabia, he should have been on a watch list and they should have kept him on that. And if you look at what happened in Brussels or in uh, Paris, you know, um, back at the beginning of the year, they have very strict gun laws. It did not prevent that. And then you see what happened in Paris last night. Um, that person went in there with a knife. There were no guns involved. Bad people are gonna do bad things. And we have to come to um, a, a way to solve our differences in a diplomatic, in a peaceful uh, method. Uh, this serves nobody. It doesn't further anybody's cause. It doesn't further Islam. It doesn't, um, uh, it, it's not going to prevent liberties and freedoms in the Western world. Um, this is not the way to solve this thing. And it puts everybody in risk around the world. And uh, it's, it's, it's not befitting to the human race. I wanted to uh, go a little bit deeper into that. How do you see Donald Trump's proposal to ban Muslims from coming to the States? In this case, Omar Mateen was born in the United States, right. so any change in that sense would not prevent anything. But how do you feel about what he's saying and on the insinuation he's made about President Obama not being clear on his will to fight terrorists? I think there's three points there. Number one is um, uh, Mr. Um, Mateen, he was born here, as you pointed out, but he got radicalized along his 29-year progress here. And there were warning signs where people had said uh, he's acting a little irrational. Uh, one of his employers or one of his supervisors was afraid to report him because they were saying how they didn't want to appear anti-Muslim. I think we need to get over the political correctness. And if there's somebody that somebody is worried about, you need to kind of talk to some people. The other thing is we need to put more emphasis on mental health issues. Uh, obviously, this is a person that was mentally disturbed. And um, we need to put more money, and this is where I agree with President Obama, uh, curbing gun violence. I agree with him 100%, and I think we need to put more money into mental health, and we're going to fight to do that. We have been since I've been here. You know, at one point we had 500,000 mental health beds in this country. We're down to under 50,000. This is something we need to put more money into. Um, and as far as what Mr. Trump said, you can't go against the whole faith like that, but if if the FBI uh, Director Comey and Jay Johnson of the Department of Homeland Security says they cannot properly vet people from war-torn Middle Eastern countries or Central Asian countries, we need to put a pause on that, and I agree 100% on him, and it's not preventing Muslims or Islamic people of the Islamic faith coming into this country. It's all about preventing terrorists from coming into this country. You know, terrorists that were raised abroad that want to come in here and do Americans harm. You're always going to have that person that's deranged, mentally unstable, that are going to do bad things like this. And that's where we need to be uh, vigilant as citizens. We need to talk to people, uh, talk to family members, and, and alert them to know that there is help out there. It's, it's something we as a society have to deal with. A government law is not going to prevent this because it's already illegal to shoot people and kill people. But yet those things happen anyways. We have to become united as a community united as a nation and we stand strong and we do not accept this in our country or any other country around the world. Uh, I wanted to end the interview asking you about your state, about Florida. You represent the third district. Yes, sir. What do you tell those watching this interview, both in the states and abroad, that might be a little hesitant right now to come to Florida, to visit Florida? Florida known for uh, as an engine of tourism in the states. What do you tell them? Is it safe to come? Yeah, I would tell them it's, it's safe to come because if you bow into what's going on, uh, this could happen anywhere, in any city, in any town, across America, across the world, as we've seen. And if you give in to this, you're giving in to the fear that terrorism provokes. And if you do that, the terrorists win. And I, I think freedom-loving people, people that believe in freedoms and liberties, won't give in to this. And that's the signal we need to stand in solidarity with our brothers, not just in our country, but around the world, that we stand strong on this. And uh, Florida's a great place. It's got a lot of great things to, uh, to see. 
bring your family, um, and it's as safe as any place in the world, uh, in my opinion, and I would not stray from that. Muchas gracias, Congresista Yojo, por estar en directo de USA. Ah, gracias, amigo. Let me ask you, Mr. President, about another democracy that is having a very different kind of drama. You made some comments about the American Republican uh, presumptive nominee, Donald Trump. Um, you called him uh, brilliant, outstanding, talented. Uh, these comments were reported around the world. I was wondering what, uh, what, in, what in him led you to that judgment, and do you still hold that judgment? Well, You, you personally are very famous in our country. You're not only famous as a journalist in one of the biggest TV stations, but as an intellectual. Why do you always change the meaning of what I said? Because at the moment you speak as a journalist, not as an analyst. Why are you juggling with what I said? I only said that he was a bright person. Isn't he bright? He is. Uh, he's, I did not say anything else about him. But there's one thing that I paid attention to and that I definitely welcome is that Mr. Trump said he's ready to restore full-fledged Russian-American relations. What can there be bad about it? Don't you welcome it? We all welcome it. Just to be clear, Mr. President, I, I, the word brilliant was in the Interfax translation. I realize that other translations might say it's bright, but I use the official in Interfax translation.